investors. This is Nick here, uh, one of the admins from the Facebook group, and also uh, I co-run iPhone Property. Uh, today I sat down and started to write an article about uh, all of this stuff that we're facing with the, the current coalition throwing at us the, the changes to the RTA, the um, letting fee thing, the what's the healthy home bills uh, this week I saw the the Warren of fitness thing um, it's probably more odd the ring fencing depreciation we've already sort of talked about that a bit um, and I, I try to like when we see these things it, it's quite easy to be reactive and go oh, you know the government's doing this and people are doing that and socialism and <laughs> communism and whatever other, um, you know, reactive thing that um, pops in your mind and be very anti, but at some point we're going to have to, like, face up to the fact that change is coming. Um, and so you, you've seen comments, oh, I'm going to sell, I'm out, too much, too soon, don't want to deal with this stuff, it's only going to get worse, we're turning into social socialist state. Which is understandable. Very just no one likes to be given bad news, um, particularly when we've on, been on such a good run for the last nine years with the blue team. But I just thought it'd be helpful to try and put all this stuff into um, real world dollar terms. Like what what kind of an impact is all of this going to have on us? Um, so we can make an objective decision because at the moment. There's a lot of reactive um, decisions being made, but let's try and work out what this is actually going to mean, and then see if it's a if it's a game changer or not. And the reason I'm recording this is because I started to write an article and it just got hideously long, um, and I boring. <laughs> I couldn't read it myself, so I'm going to um, try and get it into a 10 minute video, and uh, we'll see how we go with that. So, first up, RTA changes. Uh, Residential Tenancy Act, and they came down, uh, cha proposed changes came down to us, I think, a couple of weeks ago, last week. Um, and again, heaps of reactions and stuff. I mean, there's some, some things in there that uh, boggle the mind, particularly around making it mandatory to have pets or tenants should be allowed to make changes to the properties and I think details need to come through on some of this stuff but summary uh, ending of no cause terminations um, increasing the amount of notice a landlord must give the tenants to terminate uh, limiting rent increases to once a year uh, limiting rent bidding um, and uh, encouraging landlords to allow tenants to keep pets or make modifications to their property. Uh, now, the, it feels like it's a lot of, to deal with because it's several different topics, but I mean, really, uh, if you've got a good tenant in there and you're keeping the property, who ends their tenancy? How many people have gone to a really good tenant and said, so long? I'm going to pause for silence because I haven't. I've had good tenants leave and it sucks because you have to go and try and find a good tenant again. Um, I, I just can't see that as being um, an issue. I, I pause to say I think a lot of this has come out of the fact that we've just gone through this boom market where people were buying properties and selling them six months on or three months on or four months on. They put tenants in for these short periods while they got their capital gains or did whatever it is they want and then and move them on. And that's what this is trying to prevent, I'm pretty sure. Which, I mean, it, it, we've had a pretty good run as investors and if you sort of were doing that, you might have been disconnected from it, but if you've talked to some people who've moved four houses in six months, you know it's pretty disruptive. Um, and I, I think folks are just going to get used to working around it. Like maybe if you've got a property and you're doing stuff and you've got you, you want to sell it in four months' time, um, you have to be really specific that it's, for example, that it's a four month lease. You can't just put people on a periodic, or maybe you're just going to have to eat 
a vacancy for a couple of months because um, it's just not going to be fair to tenants to get them in and then move them out without telling them what's coming. Um, increasing the amount of notice is going from 42 days to 90. Uh, again, this is just something that we're going to learn to deal with. I mean, just plan ahead. If you want to do a renovation, you need to decide 90 days in advance, not 42. Or sale. Or... Um, whatever. Now there's going to be the odd situation where you've gone through a, fam a big change uh, and you need to move into the place or you need to sell the place. Now these are going to be exceptions. There'll be ways through these. You can always uh, go and negotiate with the tenant to end their lease, um, help pay the moving costs. Um, if someone is going to be moved out of their property in 90 days uh, regardless, um, and you're out offering to help them move out and pay some of it or whatever in order to make it quicker. Um, most people will get on board with that. I mean, rather than get an extra month or whatever it is, six weeks, and, and then have to leave. So I, I think that's just something you can be proactive and work through. Um, limiting rent increases to once a year, not an issue. I do actually think this is gonna mean landlords are more proactive about increasing their rent. Um, it may be a little bit reactive and vindictive, but like you're inflicting this on me, fine, I'm actually going to go and put my rent up when I when I can. Um, but uh, again, I don't know many people who have put their rent up more than once a year. Um, the only one I think that could be affected by this is, again, people who lent their properties outside of a peak season and say, okay, Look, you can have it for half rent or three quarters rent for this little period, and then it kicks up to regular rent at, at here. I think as long as that sort of scenario is is covered off somehow, I really don't see this as being a big problem. Uh, rent bidding, uh, this makes my stomach crawl, so I'm not worried about it. <laughs> um, I, I can sort of in a pure free market uh, situation, I can understand. Like we auction houses, why don't we auction rentals? Um, but I, it's, I don't know anyone who does this. I mean, so if you do do this, then sorry, it's going to go away. And it's, it's kind of makes uh, sense to let this one go through because if you put your hand up and oppose it in public, you're going to get vilified. Uh, encouraging landlords to let tenants get pets, I think, is ridiculous. Uh, I think that it should be a personal decision. Um, if this goes through, and I've seen some a lot of sensible comments about let's have a bond, let's have some sort of pet thing, uh, where you pay ex like basically the expected cleaning fees, which is, I mean, it could, like, you might have to rip out and put in carpets, it's thousands, or, or you know, scratch up the walls and all this stuff. So there really needs to be proper insurance in place for this, um, or a bond or something that the tenant can basically pay, and then sure, hey, cat, come on. Um, I also think that you need to be careful with properties. I have a five bedroom flat over a four bedroom flat in the middle of Wellington and it's got students in there and I really don't need three of those people having cats on this property. It's just gonna be a disaster for everyone. And I'm gonna to have to get it clean each year because of allergies and all that stuff. So it could be a bit of a sledgehammer type role that causes more problems than it, than it solves from like a social good thing. All right, but that's it. This is stuff that we can work around. There's nothing in there that makes me think this this is just going to get too hard. It's just going to be, it's going to force landlords to be really careful and checking when people move in um, and and doing all the background checks and making sure they do the rent inspections and the, the not the rent inspections, the house inspections and the rent rises and what have you. Um, and then just being a bit more organized. You have to be, you know, if you want to do something to the property, you've got to let them know three months in advance. No big deal. Next, what else we got here? Um, healthy home, healthy homes bill. We have to provide warm accommodation. Well, okay. I, really? Isn't, uh, I, I, the, the, the objections to this, I think, uh, some of them are valid, some of them are invalid. Uh, the invalid ones uh, don't make me do anything I don't want to do. It's my house, which, sorry, you providing a service has to be to a standard. Um, this is just raising the standard. 
the valid ones are um, look do we have to have the same um, how, thing in, in Northland where it's warm a lot down in Dunedin where it isn't okay cool let's look at different bands um, and just honestly pointing out that it's going it costs money uh, we'll get back to the cost money bit later on um, because I think the cost of all this stuff is being blown out of proportion the rental warrant of fitness uh, I've seen it it's this massive checklist at least the one that they were passing around Wellington um, I'm not a fan I don't think having this long list that if you fail one thing your house can't be rented out until it's rectified and reinspected and all this crap is going to um, do a lot of good the, the, this is driven by ACC trying to um, lower their uh, load um, it's not being inflicted on private homeowners so it sort of seems to be this weird like opportunistic move now maybe it would prevent injuries if you have stickers on windows um, but there's there's enough of an overlap where the the warm dry uh, insulated um, thing that the healthy home bill is going to take care of is probably half of the value that having any kind of warrant of fitness um, brings to the table and I think what is going to happen is they're going to put this law in three years to comply with it and then come back and look at warrants of fitnesses and safety things and what have you. Um, if you do have a warrant of fitness I talk about having uh, three yearly inspections where someone comes along and looks at the place and signs off on the tech board and you've got a warrant of fitness place. Um, again I think that's going to be discussed a lot because it's going to cost a couple hundred bucks a pop to do that inspection. Um, I think qualified property managers should be able to do it as part of a regular inspection, um, take some photos, problem solved. So let's forget about that one for now. If it can, I don't know. I mean, this government surprised me so far at, at talking about things that don't really make a lot of sense some of the time, but um, the Warren of Fitness one, I think, is going to just sort of disappear because they've got enough on their plate. Uh, letting fees. Now, letting fees are currently a cost that the tenant pays to the property manager for getting placed. Um, it's in theory to cover their uh, marketing and admin. However, I know that there are letting agencies out there, so it is a profitable business. Um, and this is politically being portrayed as like this crime against um, tenants. So uh, they're gonna go away. The government's pretty much signaled this as part of their campaign and it's, it's it's now being brought up as, as something they're going to move through. Uh, letting fees, so if you have a property manager and they did charge letting fees, there's a few things that could happen. They could, property manager could eat it. Property manager could um, pass on the actual costs of marketing to you. Uh, property manager could have you pay uh, the letting fee. Or, any, or they could increase their um, annual fee. To you, so the, the percentage of rent that they take. Uh, it's only available to property managers at the moment, so if you're a private landlord, no change. Um, I Again, we'll, we'll look at the, the relative costs. I mean, I think, to be honest, this is a, a 5 to $10 a week um, over two years sort of impact, if that, maybe even less. So this, while it's quite big and a vocal space like the property managers are all uncertain about what's going to happen um whatever comes through i think if you're you know we're in, in a market where rents are 300 400 500 dollars an extra five bucks would be not it's not going to kill us so let's not worry about letting fees too much now there's a few of these right we're adding the, the rta costs the, the 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 healthy homes adding a heater insulation a few things and the, the, not the RTA costs, the, the healthy homes, the letting fees. Um, I mean, even if we had to do a, a warrant of fitness and put up more railings and get our um, decks fixed up and stickers on walls and what have you, uh, again, it, it, over time the costs are, are not that much. Um, negative gearing. Now, I've done an article on negative gearing. I think negative gearing is potentially the one that's going to impact a lot more people than any of this other stuff because uh, a lot of investors have 
either their own decision or being advised by somebody who doesn't believe in the positive cash flow um, form of investing, that um, buying a property that loses you money to get a third of that back in, in the hope of getting a capital gain um, is a good idea. Now, sometimes I think there's lots and lots and lots and lots of people in Auckland have made a lot, a lot, a lot of money in a very short time by having properties that probably broke even or lost money and making massive capital gains. So it proves itself correct. Um, the government has said that we're, we're going to take that track away from you. Um, before you get super reactive and worry about this and sell your property, I would do a big check at everything you can do to increase cash flow and return and stuff on your property. First, can you increase rents? Can you take in add bedrooms? Can you subdivide? Can you um, do a different a rent by the room strategy? Can you structure your loans better? Can you look at your insurances? Can you do all this stuff? Try, just just because when you sell your house, you're gonna it's gone. Okay, so and you're going to pay an agent for that privilege most likely. Um, now's the time before all these changes come in that you can go through and just work out exactly what you can do and what the impact is. And I think if you go through this with a fine tooth comb, you should be able to get a, a cash flow um, increase. And there's going to be some reasons that rents are going to increase. I'm going to talk about uh, in, in a minute that will apply. Okay. So I think I've gotten through all this stuff and I've heard from not a few landlords that they are going to sell. Now I don't know if, if everyone's going to sell or this is just the, what was a good thing to say in Facebook in the heat of the moment. Um, if folks are going to sell, I think there's several reasons. Um, older investors, baby boomers who are now retiring who would have sold up at some point regardless probably don't want to have to push through all these changes and come out the other side. I, this, that's just a timing thing. I mean, like my dad's hitting 70 mums in their late 60s, they're baby boomers. Um, you know, if they had rental properties, they'd be selling them now. Um, I don't think that's really a direct, like the Labour government is not causing for all the baby boomers to sell their properties that they would have kept otherwise. Um, some investors are unfortunately in a position where they can't upgrade the properties. Now this, I think, is going to cause issues in the regions in particular. In the city, I mean, if I have to put a, a better heating into my um, five-bedroom, two-bathroom renovated place in Newtown, I can do it. I do get good rent, good cash flow. It's, it's a nice asset. Now, if I owned a property on... Uh, now I'm not going to throw a name of a town out there because someone's going to hear it and feel bad. But in a town where rents are low and values are low and the housing might have been put there for um, as a worker's cottage or something and it's just a, a drafty old place. Now, to turn that into a modern, healthy, warm, dry, labour-approved home is, is prohibitive um, because you're not going to get the, the rent increase and, and, the, and the rental demand to, to make this up. So I think there's going to be uh, some stock in, in, in smaller areas, regions that are going to sell. What's this going to mean though is that the people who hold on to their properties are going to see a rent increase and, and more tenant demand. So it, if you do do the work, I think you'll be fine. If you can't and sell out, um, now it's probably a good time to be selling a property in New Zealand if you're into if you have to sell because you'll you'll get um, a good value for it. Uh, a lot of people have been fed up, who are just fed up with being told what to do. So there's that. Um, some people have got properties that are negatively geared and too negatively geared. So you know if you if you've got a two percent gross yield jobby um, in the middle of Auckland and suddenly your, your $25,000 tax loss doesn't go down to 16 and that's called, and that's an issue. Um, they'll probably sell down or sell some to increase their uh, cash flow and lower debt. Uh, it's not feasible to upgrade the property to new standards. Now that's, um, again, we're going back to the regions. Like if you have to spend $10,000 on your, on your rental for whatever reason, and your rental's worth 120, it's different from if your rental's worth 1.2 million. Now on the other side, I've heard from heaps of investors that they're going to stick around. 
Me too. Um, population is still going up. Uh, increases in rents will accompany increases. Uh, it will maybe they'll lag, but the, the, the increases in cost and um, so eventually all this stuff is going to be paid for by someone else, the tenant again. Um, as supply decreases, there'll be opportunities and financial benefit for those who are still in the game. Uh, most of the costs that we're looking at incurring are one-time costs. Um, a lot of the RTA changes, I don't. I think they just work around. Um, and governments and policies change. I mean, look, the stuff. If it, we're already halfway through Labor government, I think, or maybe not quite one year. There'll be one more year of this, and then it's election year. So, if the stuff that's being done is really not good, and the next team to come in can campaign on it um, and be held accountable, then we could probably get some adjustments made. Be very surprised if not. Um, what's more, all that, I, I have a hunch that these changes are going to leave uh, investors actually better off, even if the government doesn't change and, and we, we get another lap of um, Jacinda and, and the other parties. Um, why do I think that investors are going to be better off? I think rents are going to increase more than costs. I think property values are going to increase um, as rents increase. Now this is, this is probably, I, I'm not an investor for, for value, so I don't buy property in the hope that it's going to go up in value. And I don't actually, the only time I look at the values of my properties is when I need to go and get money from the bank to buy another one. Um, so please don't point out to me that values in Auckland have gone down 0.075% in four months to June and I'm an idiot. I, I think property values increase because cash flows increases. And if you, in, in, a, in a stable environment where nothing else changes, if the rent goes up, the value goes up. If the yield of an asset goes up, the value of an asset goes up. And I think mortgages are going to decrease relative to inflation. And we'll just go through those real quick. Uh, and then that'll be my video. Now, numbers. So this is why I did the video instead of spreadsheets. So I'm going to bang out some ideas for costs. Um, let's say the landlord fits the bill for, for all the stuff that we've talked about. You have to re-insulate, add a heat pump, do some maintenance, add a deck thing, stickers, um, pay your own living fees. Um, we're at 3000 for a heat pump, 2000 for insulation-ish. I mean it varies. Other stuff, I don't know, a couple of grand average on the house, so we're at about seven. Uh, heat pumps are depreciable chattel, so you're going to be able to claim a third of that back um, against your taxes, so six. Um, using a, a, an approximate 5% cost of money, it's going to cost you 320 odd dollars a, a year or six bucks a week for all of that. So if you, if you assume that you borrowed the money to just pay for all this, it's going to cost you $6 a week. So if your rent goes up $6 a week, at some point in the next two years while they're bringing all this in, sweet. Letting fees. Um, letting fees, I think, are a week's rent. So assume tenants stay for two years, so half week's rent. Average work for property is four fifty, so two two five a year. Um, four bucks a week, $4.32. So we're at 10 bucks so far. Ten bucks a week is nothing. Um, third, now I'm adding this in. Uh, a lot's been written about tenants not needing to be responsible for the mess they make and their own damage. The, the old sucky uh, case with the TT. Now this, I think, um, I want to see the the New Zealand Property Investors Federation um, pushing back on this, but it hasn't come up yet. I don't think this is going to last very long. Um, but let's just say, you know, your tenant does something and by accident you have to pay for it at the moment. Um, I just had a, a call, my bath chipped, would you please call the handyman around to fix it? It's like, great. So anyway, I'm just assuming um, like 300, 500 bucks a year. Now that's a lot. Um, and that's also, you know, averaging it out. So you could have a, a big 
one where they smash a bench top or something um, and then nothing for a few properties. So just average like even 500 bucks a year is 10 bucks a week. Plus the other 10 bucks a week. We're, we're talking maximum $20 a week. I mean $20 a week extra rent over the next two or three years while they bring in all these changes so that we're breaking even. Does, I think that's totally going to happen. I mean it, this is not a concern. I mean I'm expecting $20 a week next year. Um, so I mean even though it feels like we're giving ground on all this stuff, it's 20 bucks a week. Um, tenants are going to be, if, they don't, if we do it two $10 stages by 2020, someone else will have paid for the cost of everything. Uh, property values I think will increase. Now this is just um, purely on a cash flow basis. So if rents go up, values go up. And it's um, another way to look at it is if you've got house A and house B and they're the same and this one rents for 500, this one rents for 550, um, you're going to buy, you're going to pay a bit more for this one because it gets a high yield. Um, now there's all sorts of other stuff with, with values. It's like locations and condition and livability and how what what sold in the street in this month and stuff. So I, I'm just tying it back to um, to cash flow, and I think over time, that's just a constant thing. It's how commercial properties are, are bought and sold based on what the yield is, um, and that's an interesting way to look at um, your residential um, as well as like as you, as these rents go up, you know the value of your property is going to go up, and it goes up quite a lot. I mean. For for a, a fifty dollar a week, um, you know, increase in, in rent. If you just value that straight off cash flow, um, you're looking at a forty to fifty thousand um, dollar value increase if you're in a, a good suburb in a, in a in a good city, but less in, a, in in the regions or what have you. But still, a lot more than what all this um, stuff is going to cost, which I think the week out is going to be about six or seven thousand. Last one. Um, this could be a separate topic. So I'll, I'll keep it pretty short. So inflation is going to eat away at our mortgages. So we're in a period of low inflation. Um, I think that's coming to an end. Um, and I think it's coming to an end because the government is going to increase minimum wages. So if you're on $18 now, an I think, is it $16? Uh, it, it's, going, it's going to go up uh, quite a bit. Now what that's, what's going to happen is a ripple effect because the person who's just above that is not going to want to be on minimum wage. They're going to want a bit more as well. So Essentially, everything's going to go up by this um, amount. Um, it's something like a 10 to 15 percent increase um, over three years. So let's just assume that uh, we have this inflation ripple, where inflation goes to like I don't know, two and a half, three percent. Might be lagging a bit because some of the stuff that businesses use now they've already paid for it but as costs increase it's it's going to get reflected and passed on so inflation as a whole is going to we're going to get this nice um increase or not nice increase however you look at it so what this means for you is the cost of everything is going to increase uh except your mortgage isn't going to increase if you've got a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage today and say you don't pay any um principal and you've got a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage in three years time but we've had three years of like two or three percent um, high inflation because of all these labor changes. Your the the cost of your mortgage in in terms of the um, current buying power of the economy has just dropped a chunk. It's a lot cheaper to pay off the five hundred thousand dollar mortgage three years in the future after inflation than it is now. So that's a little bit separate from these other things. But to me, it seems to be like another good reason to um, look at all the numbers. So what, what, what would I need to do? How much is it going to cost? How much is it going to cost per week for the next three years? Am I going to get any benefits from inflation? Um, I think we will. Uh, do I think rents are going to go up enough to cover it? Well, I think they will. It's up to you. Um, and then make a decision on whether you're going to stick around or, or buy more. Me, um, I'm keen to buy more. I've got a renovation finishing in two weeks and looking forward to getting my valuer through it, getting some more lending lined up and um, continuing to uh, go on my merry way. Thanks for watching.